What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand arthrokinematics and joint mobilizations so that you can better treat your patients and also pass the NPT. Joint mobilizations are centered around the arthrokinematics and the osteokinematics of a joint, which is why they're so important. Osteokinematics basically means that your knee will flex and extend. Arthrokinematics means that during these motions, the bones will roll and glide over each other to make that motion easier. The first step in determining a joint mobilization is to figure out which bone is moving. For example, a squat and a long arc quad both include knee extension, but because one is open chain and the other is closed chain, a different bone is going to be moving for each. Usually for joint mobs, we think in open chain like the long arc quad. So we'll use that as an example today, just thinking of knee extension and open chain where the tibia is the bone that's moving. The concave convex rule says that if the concave bone is the one that's moving, then the roll and glide are going to be in the same direction. I remember those because concave and same both have an A in them. The tibia is concave in comparison to the femur, which means that in this example, the roll and glide are going to be in the same direction. Now the roll usually happens in the direction of the moving bone. So in a long arc quad, your foot is kicking anteriorly, or the tibia, that moving bone, is moving anteriorly, meaning that the roll is most likely anterior. And because we know that the roll and glide are going to be in the same direction, for open chain knee extension, the tibia is going to roll and glide anteriorly. If you're having trouble picturing this for multiple joints across your body, think about the similar types of joints because they're all going to work the same way. For example, hinge joints like the knee and the elbow are basically just backwards versions of each other. Or ball and socket joints like the shoulder and hip are going to function the same way. So if you can think of the joint mobs you would do at the shoulder, they're going to be pretty similar for what you would do at the hip. Now a lot of times an injury, whether due to swelling or whatever's going on at that joint, the capsule is usually a little bit tight and the capsule will limit normal arthrokinematic movement meaning that the way that a joint normally rolls and glides is going to be limited because of that capsule, which is why we do joint mobs. It's to stretch that capsule out and make sure that that joint can move the way that it's supposed to to get full range of motion. So after a knee surgery, if my patient is having trouble getting full knee extension, I can move the tibia anteriorly and stretch the capsule out that way to help make it so the patient will be able to have those motions on their own. Now the amount that you stretch that capsule out is pretty important. The Maitland grades help us determine how much we're stretching equals what function for this patient. So grade one mobilizations are going to be really small mobs at the beginning range of motion. Grade two mobilizations are going to be larger ranges up to about midpoint of the range of motion. Both grades one and two are used to help decrease pain for your patients. A grade three mobilization is a larger movement of that tibia into the full range that it can stretch that capsule. Whereas a grade four mobilization is a smaller movement focused at the end of that range. Both of these are used to help stretch that capsule and increase the range of motion of that joint. A grade five mobilization is a high velocity thrust. So that's when someone cracks your back or when your patient has to undergo manipulation under anesthesia. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. The convex humerus is moving, meaning the motions are opposite. The humerus moves anteriorly in flexion, meaning that the roll is also anterior. Since the glide is opposite, it is posterior. Hopefully that covers all of the bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.